In this video we're going to be taking apart the PhoneMax R4 GT, the smallest rugged phone with thermal imaging. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also if you need any tools there are links in the description. First the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a look at the micro SD and SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the screen using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. The two Phillips screws which are holding on the metal plate or cover over the connector for the screen cable need to be removed. Now the battery cable as well as the screen cable can be disconnected from the main board. And here's a better look at the back of the screen. Six additional Phillips screws need to be removed. The mid plate can now be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the mid plate. There are five more Phillips screws that have to be removed. Looking at this side of the main board, we see the 13 megapixel front facing camera, the notification LED, as well as the proximity and ambient light sensor. We can also see the SIM and memory card reader located here. Also the primary microphone is located over here on the bottom. Once the removable shield cover has been removed, we see a thermal pad which is seated on top of the processor and we can see the RAM located next to that. Looking at the other side, we see the 64 megapixel primary camera the 20 megapixel night vision lens, the night vision lights, as well as the thermal imaging sensor. The dual LED flash is located here, and below that are the dual secondary microphones. There's a single Phillips screw which needs to be removed. Now the flex cable for the primary camera can be disconnected. The extension flex cable needs to be peeled off. Now this assembly can be carefully lifted up, but be careful since this extension flex cable as well as the flex cable for the dual microphones are still connected to the main board. Looking at the back side, we can see the secondary board that the thermal imaging sensor is connected to. There are also numerous antenna flex cables around this plastic border. The flex cable for the front facing camera can be disconnected by just popping it off. As for the charger port, it's soldered to the main board, so replacing that won't be easy. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the battery cover. Here's a look at the 3200 mAh battery. And keep in mind there's a typical and a rated capacity for the batteries. The typical capacity is 3200 mAh, but the rated capacity is 3100 mAh. 
There's also a pull pouch holding this battery down to this cover, so if you need to replace it, just peel off this tabs on this pull cover and pry the battery off. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the wireless charging coil and an FC antenna. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. There's also a rubber gasket around the opening of the speaker. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner. Once the speaker assembly has been removed, we can see an additional antenna flex cable on the bottom. The top earpiece speaker is held in place with a cure in place gasket. To replace that, just gently cut out the gasket and pull the speaker out. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. The main drawbacks for the repairability score would be the non-user replaceable charger port, as well as the availability of parts for this phone on the secondary market. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.